Last week we spoke about spiritual gifts. Last week we spoke about what kinds of gifts there were. We said there are two, two groups in the spiritual gifts. The, the, the scriptures that Pat read today, there is mention of tongues, healings, and miracles. Last week we looked at service gifts. We said there are two categories within the spiritual gifts. Service gifts and sign gifts. And after the service gifts of last week, today we're going to look at sign gifts. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Starting verse 7. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Remember that phrase, common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by one the same Spirit, and to another effecting of miracles And to another prophecy, to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of those tongues. Now, these gifts that we just read, some of them we spoke about last week. Some of them we're going to speak about this week. Miracles, tongues, and healings. In theology, what we believe is called cessationism. We believe that the sign gifts were a phenomenon for the apostolic age. Cessationism, cessationism means that they ceased, they stopped, they ceased. They don't exist anymore. And now, today, I'm going to show you from scriptures why we believe that. Let's talk about miracles. Do miracles happen today? Absolutely. Absolutely. But miracles, I can attest to them in my life. Some of you can attest to them in your lives. Sonia Cruz shaking her head. I know her story. And some of you went through it yourselves probably. God does miracles. Period. No question. However, God no longer uses a specific individual through whom He performs those miracles. Don't miss this part. God does miracles, but he does not use an individual to perform those miracles. Now, if you look back at the scriptures, in biblical history, there are four time periods, instances, that God used people to perform miracles. Now, first one is Moses. I'm going to read you the text. You're going to tell me why Moses was able to perform the miracle. Okay? Let's turn to Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. We're going to look at verse 1 through, well, we'll start with verse 1 and see what happens. Then Moses said, what if they will not believe me or listen to me when I say, for they may say, the Lord has not appeared to you. Now, as you know the story, God told Moses, go to my people, 
Tell them that I am going to save them. Go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. And Moses says, well, how will they believe me? I mean, think about yourself. If somebody walked up to you, God told me, whatever, whatever. You would say, okay, prove it. Right? It's very easy to say, God told me. The Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And then he said, a staff. Then he said, throw it on the ground. So he threw it, it became a serpent, and Moses ran away from it. And he said, God said, go hold it from its tail, and it became a staff again. As because we're short in time, I don't want to go through all of the details, but as you know, two other miracles, turning the water into blood, and uh, what was the other one, do you remember? And his, his hands became, uh, became uh, uh, leopard, and then he put his hand into his uh, coat, it became leprous, and took it out. So these three miracles he was able to do. He went in front of these people. He went in front of Pharaoh. And he performed these miracles. Why did he perform them? Why was it? Why did he need miracles? To authenticate that God had a message coming from him. Second time that God used it was in Elijah's time. I'm not going to go through because my time is running fast. Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 36 at the time of the uh, offering, evening sacrifice, Elijah's the prophet came near and said, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Today let it be known that I am your servant and I have done all these things according to your word. What did Elijah do? He did two things. One, he said he's going to pray for, for, for the rain to stop for three and a half years. It didn't rain. And then he had the showdown on top of Mount Carmel where he said, if you're going to believe those bowels of God, believe them. If you're going to believe God, is God, believe him, but let's put it to the test. You pray to your idols, and I'll pray to God, and which, whoever answers by fire from heaven is God. Why was he able to do that miracle? Just we read that, so that people know that I am doing this according to your word. This is the second time we are seeing this in scripture. Third time is, of course, Jesus. Right? We all know Jesus performed many miracles. And in John 5.36, look what he says. This is Jesus now. But the testimony which I have is greater than the testimony of John. He's talking about John the Baptist. For the works which the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works which I do, testify about me that the Father has sent me. The works he's talking about is the miracles. Jesus is saying, the miracles I'm doing prove to you that God has sent me, so listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. And then the fourth time we see miracles is the apostles. Apostles were equipped by God to perform miracles. Apostle uh, Paul, in his letter to Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12.12. 12. Let's go there really fast. It says that the signs of a true apostle were performed among you with all perseverance by signs and miracles and wonders. In other words, in order for the Corinthians to believe, 
Paul had to do miracles and signs and healings. He says, I have done that, all of that. What was the point of that? The point is so that we would believe Paul was sent by God. Now, in total of biblical history, there are four times like this, that, like we said, God used miracles through people. When he used apostles in the uh, apostolic age, do you remember what it says? Everybody that came to them was healed. Yes? Everybody. Without exception, everybody was healed. That is a gift that God has given to the apostles on that age. Now the question is, does it exist today? Some say that they do. We don't believe that they do. Because when you look at these Reasons why Moses, Elijah, Jesus, apostles were given the ability to do the miracles was to authenticate the message. Authenticate that, listen to these people. But once the Bible was complete, written, all the teachings were solid, they stopped. Why? Because... God's words, the scripture was already here. You didn't need to listen to people anymore. You had the scriptures to listen to, to learn from. Until the scriptures were there, you had to listen to people. But because scriptures weren't there, you had to, after the scriptures are there, we had to, uh, we, like we do today, we read the scriptures. Then there is the issue of the tongues. Now, when we talk about the gift of tongues, I want us to be clear of what the gift is. Gift of tongues is the ability to speak in a language that the speaker has not learned. We saw that in Acts chapter 2, in the day of Pentecost. They were able to speak, the apostles were able to speak to people from different parts of the world in their own native languages. That was the miracle. This was prophesied in Isaiah, and it was accomplished in Act 2. Now, it's very important to understand that the tongues that... The, the scriptures talk about are actual human languages that exist. Whenever you see the tongues mentioned the few times that it does in the New Testament, it's always speaking about an actual language. Somebody speaks that language, somebody must understand that language. Now, this had to happen it was a very specific time in apostolic church when the church was brand new on the day of Pentecost. This happened. And a few other times it happened. Why did it happen? Scriptures tell us this too. Because signs, uh, the uh, tongues were a sign to the unbelieving Israel. Apostle Paul says it. Tongues are assigned to the unbelieving Israel. It's just a sign to be able to prove to them, listen to these people, listen to their message. Now, Apostle Paul also says, tongues will cease. And they did. If they hadn't, if these miracles, gifts didn't cease, we would still have all these gifts in operation today. For instance, there are some that say that some people have the spiritual gift of healing. My challenge to those people would be, if you have the spiritual gift of healing, 
Why aren't you in a hospital healing everybody? Why do we even need hospitals? Apostles went, wherever they went, wherever the people were, sick, in any sickness, they healed without question. If these gifts were in existence today, why aren't these people that say that they have this gift of healing going into hospitals and emptying them out, healing everybody of all disease? That's what the apostles did. Again, God answers prayers. Miracles happen every day, but they do not happen through people. So if somebody says, I have the gift of healing, stay away from that person. They're either misled or they're lying to you. If, they, if somebody has the gift of healing, they should be able to heal any and every disease, anytime and every time. However, as Christians, what do we do when we need a miracle? We pray to God. We don't need specific people to pray for us. Oh, let me call this person or the other person. No, you pray yourself. Because it's God who is going to perform the miracle. You don't need this magical person to pray for you. God will hear you. And if he will, he will. There's nothing wrong with asking for prayer. But there is this understanding, oh, let me call such and such person or this and this sister and this and this pastor. Let me call them because they pray good. I have an issue with that. God will hear everybody's prayer. And if he will heal, he will heal. So signs, uh, tongues were assigned to the unbelievers. And another reason we believe they don't exist, these sign gifts, is sign gifts are mentioned in Corinthians, which is one of the earliest epistles. But when the specific issue of spiritual gifts are mentioned in Romans and Ephesians, which are later epistles, they're not mentioned. Another reason is Apostle Paul himself. He healed a lot of people. He raised one person from the dead. But later on in his ministry, he couldn't help two, at least two other people that I can think of, and Timothy, and also himself. So by the end of Apostle Paul's ministry, these Signs were stopping. So, for all those reasons, we can continue opening this up more, but I just wanted to give you a flyover view. For all those reasons, we believe the sign gifts have stopped with the apostles. When apostles passed from the scene, so did the sign gifts, because they no longer needed to authenticate the message we had the Bible. You will find people on TV, on YouTube, different videos performing these supposed mir miraculous signs. Don't believe it. Most of them are just... It's a show, it's, it's, they're lying to you, they're, they're crooks, they just want your money. Don't believe it. You might have some people that say, well, I speak in tongues. Well, unless it's a specific language that you yourself did not learn, you cannot say, I speak in tongues. Again, tongues were a Signed to the unbeliever, Israel. Also, today there is another part. All this developed, by the way, only in turning of century in 1900s. 
Before then, there was no mention of this. Earliest church fathers, right after the apostolic age, did not believe these miraculous gift continues, and there was no talk of tongues at all. This resurfaced in the 1900s. It got accelerated in the 60s in California. Uh, and then it got really supercharged in the 80s. But it, it's, it's, it's just taken a different toll, a different dynamic altogether today. Unfortunately, this kind of thinking is the fastest growing Christian denomination, let's call it. But it's, it's based in unscriptural truth. It's not scriptural. So the, another part of the tongues, people will say, well, it is a private language between me and God. Well, then we can't call it a spiritual gift. Why? Because we just read that gifts are given to us to serve the body. What did I say? Remember this part? Gifts are given for common good. If it's a private language between you and God, it can't be a spiritual gift. Because it's not for common good. It's only for your own good. If they exist. I don't believe they do. Because same phenomenon called glossolalia is also found in atheists. Also found in certain tribes in South America, South Africa, and Asia. People hype themselves into this. Ecstasy. I would say ecstasy, yes. And then this, some people, as you know, by, by nature are very bubbly, <laughs> you know. They're very emotional. Some people are more rational. Some people are more emotional. Emotion people, they can't stand still. They're very energetic. They're very charismatic. They, they make great friends, right? They're fun. They're all extroverts for the most, most part, right? What happens is they just hype themselves into this thing and the words do not keep up with them. But this is not a Christian phenomenon. This is a psychological issue. To say that that's a gift of the Spirit would be taking your own personal experience and putting it into Scripture. No, we have to do just the opposite. We have to judge our personal experience with the scripture. And the scripture is very clear. Gift of tongues is not a prayer language. Gift of tongues is an actual language that you yourself did not learn. With that, let's close. And after the prayer, I'm just going to go over these things in Turkish again. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the spiritual gifts you've given us to serve you. The way we serve you is through serving the body of Christ, serving one another. Father, enable us more and more to serve you in a way that is pleasing to you, that we are gifted in. Protect everybody that's here today. Protect them this week as they're coming in and going out. Protect the families. Protect their endeavors, their decisions, their plans. May they be pleasing to you. May we walk with you according to your will. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.